Okay, um, hello again. It's a very, very wet Saturday morning. There is no lunchtime in a game of football or soccer on television. So I thought this might be a window to do a video I've been thinking about for a while, which would be the seven or eight things you maybe, maybe don't know about Get It On by T-Rex. It's from this album, Electric Warrior, which in my opinion is a very good call for the best cover of the 70s. But in addition to that, it's a fantastic record. You know, it's got your Mambo Sun monolith, uh, Lights of Gas, the Jeepster, um, and it's got Get It On, which is probably the most well-known song, although I believe in America it was called Manga Gone, because there was a, already a song, Get It On, right? There's a song like Brown Sugar that you hear all the time played in bars and stuff, and you usually hear an awful lot of parts missed out, you know, just ignored. Or, or maybe guys just don't know they're there, right? Uh, and that's not a capital crime. You know, if you want to just play it, everybody sings along, Hubcat, Demi Star, Halo, and that would be me, have a beer. It's a great song, that's fine. But I thought it might be interesting to say, did you know this bit was here? Or this bit? Or this bit? And there are quite a lot of them, right? So, to get into it straight away, you know the intro. And that's where the drums play that kind of flam, bat, 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 you know, which is, I believe, Bill Legends. Great drum intro, right? All, all the bits, you know, like Steve Curry on the bass, uh, the keyboards, which I think were Rick Waitman, you know, the piano bits. Everything's great. Everybody on it is great. And one that's sometimes forgotten is Tony Visconti, who produced it, who got a fantastic sound. And it's a sound that you don't often hear. Now, I play that intro like this. This is a Les Paul Jr. It's actually a, it's a, it's a Les Paul Jr. but it's shaped like an SG, right? I turn the tone all the way down. And if it makes it, it changes the sound from... It's quite an insane rock sound to a more swampy. And I'm muting it with the fleshy part of your thumb, depending on how fleshy you are, um, to make it even more swampy in my mind. If you've got two guitars, here's what I'd do for the other part. You can play all three parts at once. It's possible to go. You know, you can do a sort of hodgepodge of all three parts, but if you've got one guitar playing the swampy bit, and two guitars in a band, the other guitar can go... This bit down here, G, F sharp, E, it sounds like the speaker's on the verge of, of blowing on the record, and it sounds fantastic. It just sounds like it's, you know, it's overloading the speaker with this. That bit sounds absolutely incredible. Again, that's Tony Visconti, but Mark Bowen played it. So that's your two bits uh, for the intro. Put them together, and we should have... Get nice and swampy. Go into the first verse, we'll keep the tone down. Right? Now you may be thinking, why are you playing that there? Why are you playing that A chord there? And it's because I think it, 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 it suits the song better to have that part of the sound spectrum covered there. Than if you went... I quite like it here. Okay. 
get to the chorus and as you know it goes Yeah, if you play with two guitars, maybe an idea to have the other guitar going. Right. Second verse, same as the first. Now when it comes to the third verse, it changes. And that A chord, which I was playing like this, which is an A, an E. That A chord, pardon me, becomes an, e, an A7, and it sounds like this. It's great, absolutely great. It's the same chord as the Gypsy chord. It's that chord, right? So it's an A with a G on top of it, right? Now, obviously, we all know that an A7 is an A. D, another A, and this high G. So you could play it there. It makes it sound kind of like a, a ragtime chord to me. And that's pretty good. Right? But the most convenient place to play it. Either that sound or swampy. <coughs> so that's the third verse, right? Every time after the verse, there's a. Right, and we get. Get that bit, right? After the third verse, well, that, there's actually a fourth verse after that, but the third verse is where it changes to do the right, fourth verse goes into This is the first of the two breakdowns, right? Both of which are, a, I believe that's called the glissando on the piano, as I say by Rick Raymond. They both, Tony Visconti takes everything down it makes it really doomy and I have to say again swampy and you get this and there's a little guitar fill from Mark and it does this it's really important right, two notes D and E very effective. Right. Back to another verse. Right. Another. Now at this point, the backing vocals, which is uh, Mark Volman and Howard Kalen, are doing something that I really, really like. Um, obviously, not every band can can you know can do the backing vocals, but as uh, the two singers who were in the Turtles are playing this. They're singing like a choir of angels. Right? And then, and they have a high vocal set, right? They're singing it in that register, which I won't attempt to do. But those are the notes. So we've got, we've got an E, an E, an E flat, a D, E chord, and then we just run this. That bit, right? 
So, I've had the brake down. breakdown comes in again and this time now you've got to get this bit if you're playing this song in my opinion you've got to get this bit so here's breakdown number two right it's a reverse of the just D to E it's F sharp D <clears throat> now I think most of us would go and play that G, but Mark plays an F sharp and he just sits there. There's a hammer on. Go. Right. Then after the second one though, there's a, a sax line that does this. It's not a guitar line, it's the saxes play that, but it, it can be played on the guitar. So it's like a B, a C sharp E, a G, then and back to This is where Mark shouts, take me, right? Here it comes, right? <clears throat> Mark plays this tiny little solo that is sensational. So we've got there. Mark says, take me, and he plays. That's the extent of his solo. Now for ages I used to think it was... And I knew it was sort of stuttered out. But the, the B note is actually a bend. So what Mark plays is. And then we're back into Oh meanwhile I was still thinking Which you should know comes from Little Queenie by Chuck Berry and the Stones, right? So we've had that incredible little solo. Sorry. Yeah, bend first then then picked. And there's one last thing, right? You hear this, it's a D note. And it's that's the feedback. It's not violin then but I guided there. You hear that, right? So I hope that has been helpful. <clears throat> and so as a recap, swampy bit, right? Other guitar, first verse, I would play there, right, third verse, first breakdown, right, second breakdown, High vocal bit. Right. 
Raspy sax bit. Max has taken me. And meanwhile, I was still thinking. And then finally, this high D. Back. That's it. Those are all, in my opinion, the missing bits um, to T Rex's masterpiece. Uh, get it on. And again, a big shout out to Tony Visconti, who did one of the great production jobs of all time on it. If you know all these parts already, then, then I do apologise. If you get even one from them, then great. And if you're playing it, you know, this weekend in a bar, put in one of those bits. And if I'm in the bar, I will buy you a beer.